Let's get you some breaking news that's coming in. U.S. President Joe Biden visits the refugee site to take stock of the situation. That's the latest coming in at the moment. Overseas, the humanitarian efforts on ground also receives a briefing on the humanitarian response to the growing flow of refugees. That's the latest coming in at the moment. Breaking news on your screens right there. Uh, let's get you a reporter to bring you up to speed as well with all these developments that are coming in at the moment. But day 31 of the invasion, U.S. President Joe Biden visits refugee site to take stock of the situation, overseeing the humanitarian efforts on ground, also receiving briefing on the humanitarian response to the growing flow of refugees. <coughs> Our reporters will be joining us in just about a bit with the latest developments, uh, but... Uh, We'll continue tracking the story in much detail as our reporters will be joining us in just moments from now on this breaking news that's coming in. Now, after attending three back-to-back -back emergency uh, summits, all right, uh, we'll get you uh, our reporter uh, who will bring you up to speed with the latest on the breaking news coming in. U.S. President Joe Biden visiting refugee site to take stock of the situation, overseeing the humanitarian efforts on ground also receiving a briefing on the humanitarian response to the growing flow of refugees. All of this is happening in Warsaw and Poland. Remember, a lot of Ukrainian refugees have fled Ukraine and gone to the neighboring Poland to sh seek shelter. Their houses, their families, their homes have been displaced. There are a lot of kids, there are older people. All of this in the hands of Russia's offensive against Ukraine. This is a humanitarian crisis of catastrophic proportions we're bringing to you on your screens. And Gaurav Salman, who is live in Poland, is now joining us. Gaurav, um, you've been tracking all these developments. Now, U.S. President Joe Biden has also uh, uh, gone ahead and visited the refugee site as well to take stock of the situation, the humanitarian efforts on ground. Uh, what is the kind of briefing that U.S. President Joe Biden has received on the humanitarian response to the growing flow of refugees in Poland? So the president is likely to speak um, in, a, in a short while from now. And before that, uh, he's interacted one, not just with the aid workers, but also with the refugees. Um, and from what we've been told, he was quite moved uh, listening to their plight, uh, moved by the atrocities they faced and, of course, the hardships and, and, and the courage that they showed in the face of, uh, as the Americans are putting it, the, the tanks, the Russian tanks, they faced those tanks and facing those heavy adver uh, you know, adversities. These people have now reached uh, this place. The apprehension is, while about 3 million people have been displaced, 10 million displaced internally, 3 million have crossed their borders, 2.5 million are in this country, many more could come in the days and weeks ahead. And that is the big threat. As of now, those who've come in here, uh, President Duda of Poland has uh, reassured uh, the people that they will be looked after in terms of their food, their health care, their education, even jobs for a period of six months. Uh, a lot of aid is pouring in from international agencies and the United States has promised aid to look after them. But Chaiti, a big threat, as you would well appreciate, is child trafficking and women trafficking. Do keep in mind that these are children who've come often with relatives or often in instances where parents weren't there so children have moved out uh, on their own or with relatives child trafficking and women trafficking is one of the biggest threats at this point of time in in poland and other countries where the refugees have moved because financial assistance may be uh, available to some may be meager for others to make both ends meet uh, that would be one of the big challenges. And when President Biden now addresses people here, uh, there are a large number of displaced people he would be addressing uh, in about a couple of hours from now. It is hoped that he will talk about uh, the humanitarian assistance that would be given. Remember, this is one of the biggest catastrophes, uh, so to say, uh, since the Second World War movement, since Second World War. Second aspect is military aid the people who moved here they're also saying that the american president to to stop a bigger catastrophe has to talk about a no-fly zone and military aid and peacekeepers on ground that's the only way to deter russia Chaiti. so uh gaurav since you spoke about trafficking as well this is a huge concern globally 
as far as trafficking is concerned and now vigilantes would be stalking the Ukrainian border as sex traffickers would be targeting the fleeing of women and of children. And how is it that the NATO nations uh, plan to come together to contain this particular situation? This is one of the biggest challenges uh, that, that the government here in Poland, aid workers here in Poland uh, and volunteers face. Uh, how do you stop that uh, women trafficking and child trafficking in such a scenario? And the numbers that we're talking about are huge. Um, uh, you know, 2 million plus, uh, 2.5 million, as the government puts it, uh, people who've come uh, and, and many unattended. The men folk are fighting the war. Um, the men between 18 and 60 uh, not permitted to leave. It's the women, the the elderly, uh, the women and the toddlers, the children who are here. So um, two things are being done. Young women and little children, uh, especially those who are unattended, they are kept in specialized camps and um, uh, no, no male uh, access to that area. Women police, women volunteers, women aid workers, uh, women doctors, women pediatrician, women uh, gynecologists, they are going to those special camps to look after those people. <clears throat> but that will happen for some time. How long will that continue remains a big question, Chaiti. Point one, point two. Chaiti, what is actually heartbreaking in a sense is that Poland is considering building more shelters for such people, anticipating that if this war intensifies in its second month, so 2.5 million people have come into Poland right now, that figure could swell in the weeks ahead if more people flee Ukraine, uh, uh, given that the apprehension is in some sectors this war could really intensify, the shelling and the bombing of Ukraine could intensify and that is why to escape that, people will come to the closest border to Poland and escape. That is why Poland is taking care to ensure that they build shelters for future and not just temporary shelters, but prefabricated shelters for large number of internally or externally displaced people to be moved in. Uh, and that is one of their bigger apprehensions, Chetty.